from a um, demo measurement perspective, we're looking at alternative uh, measurement um, partners that, that really are comparable and, and can work alongside of the Nielsen's of the world. Um, so, so what we've been doing is we've been talking to our, our publisher partners um, and understanding what, what they're doing and, and their RFPs and, and RFIs, what they look like. Um, ideally, what we want to do is, is come to a place where maybe instead of just um, you know, buying on, on Nielsen, uh, perhaps there's an alternative source where we're, we're buying on and comparing our, uh, you know, our, our Nielsen buys to a Comscore buy or, or a, a video web. And that seems to be something that a lot of our, our publishers are, um, they're on board with and, and, and something that they're working towards too. We know that it's a long road. Um, by no means do we think that there's going to be, um, a product that's ready for us to be buying by uh, by the time of the 2022 2023 upfronts um but you know we we hope to make some strides on you know for when that exists when that occurs alex what's the role of the publisher or the broadcaster and what do you need from them to in these partnerships yeah um the role for for measurement we need an open mind right we need them to um they really learn with us, whether it's, you know, through the pain points, um, you know, you know, basically like without the need for incremental spending to learn, how do we learn with what we already have in place, uh, you know, inventory that we already have placed. Um, so, uh, you know, I think that that's a, a big component to it from a, a research perspective, you know, it doesn't just have to be, um, you know, demo measurement. It could be some of the other uh, brand metrics that that frequently you know came from the digital teams, but but what they have always measured, which is you know, you know, brand lift and incremental um, incrementality to brand lift points. And um, what does engagement look like? Uh, can we track any transactions or conversions, that kind of thing? Um, you know, we're, we are, we're open to um, a world where it's not just, you know, measurement, you know, that's based on demo, you know, now that we have this more interactive OTT CTV playing field. What about uh, the, the role of content and context? And, you know, we talk a lot about counting, but what about the impact and the importance of content and context? And how does that fit into, you know, your evaluation of investments? The role of content and context is it's pivotal. Um, you know, right now we are we're evaluating some some third parties that um, you know claim to specialize in uh, development of of contextual PMPs, right? So if we have a, a client that's very conservative, brand conscious, brand safe, that maybe they only want to be seen in uh, lifestyle or sports content, how can we work with um, you know, one of these partners that can guarantee that we're only going to be in in lifestyle or in sports content within their within their catalog of um, you know uh, networks or or um, you know programming. So it, it is something that we're looking at. We're looking at uh, how to verify that, whether that is through you know an MRC accredited partner like a Double Verify or um, or somebody like that, and. Um, you know, we, we think that it's not just brand safety, but it's brand suitability, right? Um, from the TV world, they've, they've already and always had these um, do not air lists, but do not air lists really haven't existed in the digital world in the same means. There's always been an exclusive, you know, exclusive list or an exclusion list, but it's, it's not so much a factor of, hey, we can't run in this particular show in an OTT CTV environment, um, or that, that's very hard to do. Um, with a lot of our broadcast partners. So, um, you know, it's, it's something that we're constantly working on and, and working with new partners, whether it's, you know, the irises of the world or, or anybody else. And Alice, what's exciting for you in terms of innovation from a plat platform perspective? Uh, uh, I know you are going to make a lot of rounds at CES to sort of uh, check out a lot, and I know your clients are interested. Um, what do you think is exciting, uh, you know, in terms of... Um, video platforms uh, emerging or, or growing or 
what, what's, you know, what kind of are you sort of excited about for the new year? Yeah, I mean, I think the the OEMs, you know, they're they're primed to make a, a, a big make big inroads um, in the upcoming years. I think they're they're figuring it out. They're they're understanding how to sell their inventory and and monetize their OTT CTV inventory, whether that's via the third party platforms that are on their um, on their devices or whether that is their own live. Um, apps that are on their, their devices that, that are owned and operated by those particular OEMs. Um, a lot of them have links to, AC, uh, to ACR data and, and they're able to really make informed decisions on who to serve impressions to and how to serve impressions. So that's definitely one thing we've, we've been keeping an eye on and really tuned into. Another area is uh, interactive video. Um, so, you know, whether it is, um, you know, video that's kind of playful with with questionnaires and that kind of thing that that serves in front of a, a pre roll ad, or it's a um, you know a more shoppable style ad uh, that that's something that we've been in tune to. Um, you know, we're we're keen on on what uh, what it looks like once Pinterest rolls out their uh, ecom video app in in the upcoming uh, quarters as well. So certainly a lot going on in the OTT CTV space. Um, and, you know, it's an exciting time there. 